Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Do you want to be perfect? Is it possible to reach perfection? Does this theme also lead us to the epistle to the Hebrews? Let's read what the Apostle Paul says in Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race set out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What is the Apostle Paul talking about here? Of Jesus as a model of perfection or as the one who perfects our faith? Did Jesus give us only a pattern of perfection which has nothing to do with perfecting our spiritual life? Or does that model lead us to action? The word used in the epistle to the Hebrews is teleioten, whose verbal root is teleio and means to complete, to perfect. The original meaning of the word tell is to reach the end or purpose, to reach the aim. And here we are introduced to another debate that occurs in Christianity. It is important to us because it has to do with the essence of Christianity and the message of salvation that we find in the Bible. Who should be made perfect? Christ? Us? Both? In the event that this is what God requires of us, how can we obtain perfection? By the good works we do, as taught by Roman Catholicism and in some way also Islamism, the other medieval religion? By having Christ as our substitute, who with his life completed our perfection according to the general tendency of evangelicals and Protestants? And what do we Adventists believe? This is a very comprehensive topic that we do not intend to exhaust here. On YouTube, I have a subject in Spanish that I prepared entitled The Final Vindication of the Last Generation. There I expand the subject further and I hope to prepare a series of topics this year on that subject both in English and Spanish. There are two extreme tendencies that are being promoted in our church today. These are manifested among Adventist theologians who resort mostly to Protestant books for their classes and then try to adjust our theology to conform to those sources. One tendency reflects the evangelical thought which presumes that we cannot keep God's law because we cannot reach perfection. The other extremist tendency reflects in some way the Roman Catholicism belief that if we strive with our all willpower, we can reach perfection. And in order to strengthen their view, both extreme interpretations criticize each other. Let us try to find a synthesis to clarify this subject. What did Paul mean in Hebrews 12:2 by presenting Christ as the perfected perfecter of faith? Some see that the men of faith in the previous chapter gave us an admirable example of faith. 
but which was anyway not perfect because they did not yet obtain the prize they were promised. Hebrews 11, verse 40. So, someone like Jesus must come to give us a perfect example of faith, someone who obtained his reward because he ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of the throne of God. We agree with that assertion, but is it enough? Should we contemplate Christ only to admire what he did without involving ourselves in that pattern of faith? He is the perfecter of our faith, and we are exhorted to set our sights on him so that we can succeed as he did, not remaining static without paying attention to what he can do in our lives. Now, let us consider Christ as someone who reached perfection. In the same epistle, the Apostle Paul says that Christ was made perfect by what he suffered. Let us read. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom every thing exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Hebrews 2, verse 10. Here the apostle presents Christ again as the author of salvation, whom, as we saw in a previous lesson, God perfected, not because he was not already perfect, but because he had to become a perfect savior. This is the reason why Paul says that it was fitting that he be made perfect savior through suffering. Who was it fitting for? First of all, for God, because he wanted to save us and he had to do it consistently in a way completely acceptable to the universe. But it must also be suited to us because Jesus was made our perfect savior and high priest in the heavenly temple so that we can obtain eternal life. That's what another passage from Hebrews says. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, Hebrews 7, 26. The second part, which applies to us in reference to our salvation, we must not neglect it by throwing our hands down. So let us read another passage from the epistle to the Hebrews. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him and was designated by God as high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 5, verses 8 to 10. Here we see that by being perfected in his faithfulness through suffering, Jesus became the source of eternal salvation. For whom? For everyone? No. For those who obey him. How? Through the priestly ministry of our high priest. In other words, Jesus is the perfecter of our faith today through his priestly ministry in the heavenly temple. This is expressed in the words of another passage from the epistle to the Hebrews. For the law designates weak men as high priests, but the word of the oath which came after the law designates the Son made perfect forever, Hebrews 7, 28. So in that perfection of Jesus as our model, we become involved. 
our obedience is possible thanks to his current priestly intercession in heaven. Without having learned to obey God amid suffering, an experience the Son had not known before, Jesus could not have been a faithful high priest to understand our sufferings. We, as those who attain perfection by imitating Christ, this is the second aspect of what we are considering now. In Hebrews 12, 23, in the same chapter that says Jesus is the perfecter of our faith, Paul states that the righteous are also made perfect. So we should not be left with the idea that Jesus is the only one who achieves perfection, but also those who follow him. Let us read Hebrews 12, verses 22 to 24. You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to myriads, myriads of angels in joyful assembly, to the congregation of the firstborn enrolled in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood. Here we see that by faith, believers, even in the first century, were to approach not only the heavenly realities of their days, such as the throne of grace where Jesus interceded at that time for them, but by faith they were to also anticipate the final events of judgment and their final redemption in heaven. What does the apostle here mean when he mentions the spirits, the spirits of the righteous made perfect. There is no doubt that in this verse the perfection of Christ reaches believers as well, and that it is possible to obtain it thanks to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. But when? Now? In the end? In the last generation? After dying and resurrecting, how are they or were they perfected? And one answer is, Jesus perfects us by granting us forgiveness through his priestly intercession. In Hebrews 9, verse 9 and 10, verse 1, Paul states that the ancient sacrificial system cannot make us perfect because it has at its base a defect, a word he uses in Hebrews 8, verse 7. Not even the sacrificial animals could elevate the worshippers to perfection. The proof was that day after day, year after year, Sinners continued to offer sacrifices because they did not achieve perfection. Therefore, the day had to come when a more perfect tabernacle would rise, Hebrews 9.11, where a perfect offering or sacrifice, sacrifice could be offered to bestow perfection, Hebrews 10, verse 14. Something that becomes possible through an impeccable, priestly intercession, Hebrews 7, 26. This is the message of all the apostles, as we can see in Acts 5, 31. God exalted him, Jesus, to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. The second point how Jesus is uh, the perfecter of our faith. Uh, it has to do with what he do for us through trial, when we pass through different trials in our life. Once we have been forgiven and become part of the family of heaven and the church of Christ, 
we enter the school of Christian perfection that has to do with the process that Paul most often refers to as sanctification. In other words, it is a Christian sanctification for a lifetime. It consists in constantly growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3, verse 18. How does Christ perfect us today? In a manner similar to the one his father used to perfect his son to be our perfect Savior through trials. The men of faith of the past also went through trials and in them their faith was revealed. Their testimony is a good example to follow. But there would be a bigger, more convenient and better example to come in the future. For this reason, our eyes must be placed on Jesus above all else, for only he can bring us to perfection. Let us read. God hath planned something better for us, so that together with us, they, the ancient people of faith, would be made perfect. Hebrews 11, verse 40. It happens that many times we have character defects that others can see, but that we do not grasp. Our eyes are only opened in such cases when our faith is tested through affliction. Will we keep our eyes on Jesus and be faithful under provocation and oppression? The Apostle James encourages our faith by telling us, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Allow perseverance to finish its work so that you may be perfect and complete, not lacking anything. James 1, verses 3 and 4. It is also in trials that love is perfected, which is our supremely necessary attribute that we must possess in our characters. And that love for Christ and our fellow men is perceived in our faithfulness in keeping God's commandments even during tribulations. The Apostle John said, We can be sure that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. If uh, anyone says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone keep, keeps his word, the love of God has been truly perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. Whoever claims to abide in him must walk as Jesus walked. John 2 verses 4 to 6. We see that Jesus is not only the one who perfects our faith by giving us a perfect model of faith and life, but he also perfects us when we strive to imitate him. And we should not be discouraged in our efforts to imitate Jesus, because even through our imitation is not perfect, he accepts our effort and imparts his perfection to us. Our Christian perfection is possible only through Christ and in Christ, who in his love and mercy covers a multitude of sins by imparting his justice to us. Well, I said at the beginning that the topic was very extensive, and we did not intend to exhaust it here. Let us conclude with the beautiful words that the Apostle Paul addressed to the Philippians, followed by another statement from the spirit of prophecy. Not that I have already obtained all this, 
or have already been made perfect, but I pressed on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3, verses 12 to 14. At every state of development, our life may be perfect. Yet, if God's purpose for us is fulfilled, there will be continual advancement. Sanctification is the work of a lifetime. Let us thank God for Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who not only gave us the greatest example of Christian perfection, but is also able to bring us to perfection, supplying all that we lack with his own righteousness. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Thank you for the, the example of Jesus, our Savior, for the perfection of his character, which uh, inspired us to imitate him and to grow day by day in the knowledge of his love, his righteousness. We ask you the help of your spirit to grow also in uh, a better character and to be day by day, to resemble day by day more Jesus, our Savior. And gave us, give us the last reward that you promised to all those who are faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.